Who's gonna worry us? It's your boy, Lionheart. And I'm back. Feels good, man. Feels good to be back. I'm doing good. I hope you guys are doing good. And we're going to get into a new video. Topic is bitter. A bitter pill to swallow. But it also leads to a topic that I feel we need to discuss. We need to talk about. We need to address. Yeah. As of February Thursday 23rd 2023 Shinji Mikami the creator of Resident Evil is leaving Bethesda or shall we say Tango Gameworks this man was an absolute legend he worked for Capcom uh, he worked for, and he had his own, I think it was like his own studio or part of a studio with Hideki Kamiya uh, called Clover Studio that was in part of Capcom. Um, and then he was in Platinum Games and then he got his own studio, Tango Gameworks. And he's created games such as Resident Evil, Resident Evil 2, uh, Dino Crisis, Resident Evil Nemesis. I like Resident Evil Nemesis, even though not people like that game. Dino Crisis 2, Onomusha, um, Devil May Cry, um, Phoenix Wright. He worked on a lot of games, man. Resident Evil 0, PNO 3. PNO 3 is a godlike game. That game is not really that well known but that game is an incredible game um yeah evil within vanquish uh, shadow of the damned i love that game that game did not get budgeted properly right so that is kind of like really annoying and that game was never as good as it could have been but it was a really good game um, and of course tokyo wire hi-fi rush the latest game that came out this year. Well, he didn't direct the game, but he was an executive producer, right? An advisor, had a heavy role in that game. So he's worked on some incredible games, man. And let's be honest, he changed the video game industry with Resident Evil 1 and with Resident Evil 4, right? Absolutely incredible. Anything he sets his mind to, he can just create an incredible game. And he takes a long time to develop his games. But in taking a long time, he always delivers absolute quality. Unless there's a situation like what happened with uh, Shadow of the Damned, right? Where pff, it was EA that was working on that game, that was funding that game. So... What do you expect? You could tell that like, you played the game and you pretty much can tell that EA pulled the plug on that game, right? The funding, and you could see where they pulled the funding for that game, right? Otherwise, that game could have been absolutely incredible. Absolutely incredible, right? Um, so, yeah, so that's deeply unfortunate that he's leaving, retiring. Uh, from Tango Gameworks not effective immediately but he's staying there just to like gradually leave train up the people and you know he's extremely extremely valuable he is a legendary talent in the video game industry and this has led me to want to talk about what is going on just with game development at the minute because we're starting to see the quality of games drop a lot of games are starting to go into live service which i don't like at all 
right? And the quality is kind of diminishing. And I feel like there's two reasons for that. Number one is because you have managers, executives, CEOs that only think about the end, the short game instead of the long game, which they used to play, right? Long game, we get quality, long production time, quality games, quality content, nice, good game. We all have a good time. Short game, you brass the developers out, you work them to death, like vampires bleed them dry, microtransactions, um, you try to release games super early, a um, lot of DLC, content that is cut from the game and then sold to you later on through DLC, or as I say, microtransactions, live service, all that type of stuff. You know, when there's something in a game that benefits players, they will remove that immediately. But if something that is hurting the players, but the players don't really notice, then they leave that in the game for as long as possible until players notice it. And if they make a big enough noise about it, then they'll try to change it or they'll try to fix it. Just stuff like that. Games releasing way too early and being broken. Management not being good management, just being toxic. You know, as we've seen, that has happened with all these game development studios like Activision Blizzard and, you know, Raven Studios or just EM, Ubisoft. We've all seen what they've been doing, the way they've been treating their developers. And that's why gaming is in a really bad place and it is just going lower and lower and lower. Because if you've got talent, isn't it a good idea to treat them right? To be good to them? Give them a break? Stop rushing them? Stop pressuring them? Stop being nasty towards them. Stop being manipulative. Stop trying to bleed them dry. Suck all the life and passion out of them. You're only going to get one or two projects out of those people. Where if you treat them nice. You pay them right. You give them holidays. You give them breaks. They're always refreshed. They're going to produce their best work. When they're happy. When they're being paid. When they feel appreciated, when their ideas are being listened to and implemented, considered, then you're going to get a better product. It's like the gaming industry had, I don't know, maybe seven, eight, maybe nine years of good game development lot of good gaming ideas you know the resident evils the death may cry the final fantasy the call of duties the halos the mass effect games it started off really good and then once these franchises and studios got established that's when all these vultures with big money, CEOs, people that don't care about gaming, but they can see business opportunities and where money can be made. And they've already gotten these games and these franchises have already got an install base. And then these people swoop in like the vultures they are, and then they monetize it into oblivion. Marketing, fake games, that's the reason why you have a situation where, let's look at an example for um, E3. E3, then the water. Ain't no one going to E3. Sony, Microsoft, Nintendo, nobody's going to um, e um, E3. Good. I never really liked E3 anyway, if I've been absolutely honest with you. It was just, to me, just 
fraudulent. You had a lot of game developers come there with E3 demos that wasn't even the full running game. Whenever they showed a new game announcement, it was like a CG trailer that didn't even represent the actual game. Or they had a game, version of a game that was running on a super PC that wasn't even a legit video game. It was just a playable simulator. A glorified, like, what is it? When you test your PC, like graphic test program. And it was not anything that would be remotely close to the finished product. And it was just, E3 was always the type of industry event that sold you a dream. That was never going to be reality. And if it ever was, extremely rare that it was. So I'm happy that E3 is flushed down the toilet. If I'm being honest with you, just put in the bin, gone. Happy with that. But then you look at the whole, as I said, the industry of video gaming and the way they treat developers. And it is essentially the same thing. They sell you a dream. They hype you up and you live on the promise of what you felt and what you played when it was good. When it was in its growth period. You look at a game like Mass Effect 1. Starting game, Mass Effect 2. They were getting it right. They got it right. They nailed it. There were still little issues. But the game was so incredible. That you could forgive its shortcomings. Then you had Mass Effect 3. And Mass Effect 3 was absolutely incredible. Other than the ending and certain story uh, beats were like not so great and certain uh, characteristics of certain characters in that game were not good at all but 90% of the game other than the ending first ending was good that the, that the game launched with all good and that's what I'm trying to say you brass out your developers you treat them like absolute garbage you're going to get a garbage product because the people are not, their hearts are not in it. They're overworked, they're tired, they're unhappy, they're underpaid. I heard like there was a situation, I did a video on it with CD Projekt Red, where they tied developers' bonuses to reviews. So if it got good reviews, then the people would get their bonuses. The mind boggles at that reviews you really want to give that amount of power to review channels i don't even know the future i feel is you have to train up new developers the developers that are on the way out through retirement because you know they're getting older now because I was playing video games in the 90s, in the early thousands. Well, I, no, 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 I wasn't playing in the 90s. I was playing video games in the early thousands, right? But the reason I'm still young is because in the 90s, I was young. I was still a child back in the, in the early thousands. In the 90s, when game, well, games weren't really... Well, I guess you did have games like... Lara Croft and Final Fantasy. But I never had access to those games at that time. Because didn't have a TV, didn't have a console. Didn't really know what gaming was at that period of time. So, you know. But you've got a lot of these developers, right? That they were in their 20s. They were in their 30s. Early 30s. Back in those days, in the 90s, in the late 90s, in the early thousands, they were already in their 20s, in their 30s. That's why the generation now, we are where they were back in the 90s and the early thousands, you know? So, these people now are in their 50s and in their, coming to their 60s, yeah? 
there's certain situations that is going on, for example, in Platinum Games, yeah? And you look at a game like, let's say, for example, Astral Chain. Astral Chain wasn't made by Hideki Kamiya. That game was specifically made by a guy called, I don't know his full name, but it's Tora. Yeah, something Tora. Yeah, I don't want to say his full name because I'll get it wrong. I don't want to mispronounce his name. Yeah. And before he made Astral Chain, he was actually a designer on Nier Automata. So they started him off as a designer on Nier Automata. Then gave him uh, his directional debut on Astral Chain. And Astral Chain is godlike. Nier Automata is godlike. This is the future. You train up new staff. You pay them well. You treat them well. You don't brass them out. You give them projects. You let them explore their create. Give them um, creative freedom. And see what happens. Magic can happen. You look at Bayonetta 3. Bayonetta 3 was not directed by Hideki Kamiya. It was made by... Yosuke Miyata. Miyata. Right? Not Hideki Kamiya. He could have. But he didn't. Gave it to somebody else. Platinum Games. You look at Spider-Man 1. And Spider-Man 2. In um, Insomniac Games. Is made by Brian Itaha. I probably said his name wrong. Yeah. It was directed by that guy. Directional debut, I think his directional debut, you know, or one of his most recent games, right? You look at a game like Spider-Man, Miles Morales, we're talking about Insomniac Games, by the way. It was direct, directed by Brian Horton. You look at um, Street Fighter 6. Street Fighter 6 is directed, it's got, I think it's got like two new lead developers, yeah, and... I think I don't know his first name, but it's Nakayama, and um, yeah, something Nakayama, right? I don't, I can't, say, I don't know, I can't remember his first name, but I remember his second name, right? New director for Street Fighter Six. Um, and you look at um, Devil May Cry Five. You've got Hideki Itsuno, and he's got like his whole team that he's that he's had that he's working on the new Jagger's Dogma game with right so he's got like a team that he has that he work on his projects and he trades up his team man and that team love him they support him they follow him on every project where they can he get i think he, he's the kind of guy that gets to choose who he works with and you can see he's training up all the people that are under him and they enjoy working with him right and um, also i forgot to mention and um, because that was um capcom um, Itsuno and Nakayama, those are um, Capcom, right? But if we go back to Insomniac Games, Brian Horton is also working on Wolverine, the Wolverine game. So he did Spider Man, Mars Morales, and then because he did such a good job there, they put him on Wolverine. That's what I'm talking about. You train new talent. You give the talent that you've been working with, that you've been training up, a new project. You don't brass them out. Um, Ratchet and Clank, Rift Apart, Marcus Smith. This is what I'm trying to say. You have to train new talent and treat them well. Because you've the industry has lost so many good developers. And potentially incredible game uh, industry changing devs because they've been brassed out. The amount of people that have left Capcom when they were brassing people out. The amount of people that have lost lost them um, left Ubisoft because those people were getting brassed out. Right, a lot of people that left um, Infinity War, um, Infinity, Infinity Ward. I think it is. Yeah, Infinity Ward. Even though, in the end, they did go to... Um, oh, I forgot what they're called. Respawn. Right? They did 
um, go to be um, respawn. You know, um, Cyclone Games, the people that did Burnout, EA, brass them out. And uh, discarded most of that talent. You know, that type of thing has got to stop. It's got to stop. Or else gaming won't have anyone left. You look at... Um, what was that, that company? And they did... I don't even want to say it. Witcher 3. And Cyberpunk. That company. Oh my goodness. CD Projekt Red. Yeah, CD Projekt Red. You had a ton of talented developers gone. Gone. No longer work for CD Projekt Red because of how brutal the hours were. The disrespect. How easily they just threw them away. And that can't happen, man. That cannot happen to gaming. Because gaming will not develop. That's why gaming is developing at such a slow pace now. Because you've lost so many talented people. And people don't want to come into gaming. Because they see the way they're going to be treated. They ain't going to be treated right. They're going to get brassed out. They're going to get their money taken from them. They're going to be overworked. Brassed out. Crunch for, for years. Crunch. For years, not even days or weeks or months, years of crunch. So, yeah, that's really what I wanted to say, you know. They really have to change the way that they are treating developers in the video game industry or else it's over. And we will not have anything left because if you look at the way gaming is, it's not in the best place. And the games that are good, like, you know, you got your Final Fantasies and games like Guilty Gear Strive and Devil May Cry 5, The Jacker's Dogma, all these type of games, God of War, Ragnarok, all these games, they are made, you can see the developers are actually happy. They've lived through the bad times, right? And the studios are starting to realise we have got diamonds. Let's not destroy them. We're losing all the legendary talents. We can't afford to lose them anymore. And how do we retain them? We treat them right, we pay them right. Give them creative freedom. Stop being horrible towards them. And that goes for just in general, just, I don't know, common sense, be good to people, be nice to people. And somehow you might be surprised what people will be able to do when they're happy, when they're paid and when they're being treated right. And that's the moral of the story. You look at games like Spider-Man 1, um, Final, uh, Final Fantasy, um, what was it? Final Fantasy 7 Remake um, Street Fighter 6 is looking incredible Astral Chain You look at all these type of games Spider-Man Miles Morales Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart uh, God of War Ragnarok Those games are different level What is that game that I'm playing right now Xenoblade Chronicles 3 Those games are different level because you could tell that the devs are being treated right. So yeah, that's really all I wanted to say. So it is truly sad and unfortunate that we are losing such a legendary talent in the video game industry in a one Shinji Mikami. But hopefully he's passed his talents onto the other devs that were working with, um, for him in Tango Gameworks and in Bethesda. Some people have been treated right and he's been helping them out with their game development. And yeah, see what we're going to do, see what's going to come of it. You know, they still got good studios in there, like the people that made um, Wolfenstein and um, Prey. And they made a new game. Death something, not Deathlock. 
and it was on a place and there, it takes place in a place called Black Reef. What was it called? Deathloop. Deathloop. Ha <laughs> ha, we got it. Right, um, and that studio, you know, um, I really hope that they get treated right. Maybe that studio is... Arcade Studio. You know, that is an extremely talented studio. That is important that they don't get brassed out. You know, we got the studio that are working on. There's another game that um, that Namco Bandai is working on. Um, Blue Protocol, right? So we do got games like that coming out, even though that's a live service game. Not a big fan of that at all. You've got the Tales of Arise, Tales team. You know, they clearly doing amazing work. So... The potential is there. The future is there. Activision Blizzard. Finished. That's not going to work. Simply because of the management that is there. Um, when it comes to Microsoft or something like Halo. They need a complete restructure. They need a complete restructure. And they need talent. That is not brassed out. That's all I really got to say about that. And uh, Warriors, I want to know what you guys think. What do you think about the video game industry? Um, where it's going? What are your suggestions? How do we fix this? Because, as I said, the video game industry, we do have a couple good gems. And is it too late? We are. I do feel like these devs and these CEOs are realising if you don't fix up now, Everything is going to be finished. It's basically the short game that they're playing is coming into effect rapid. Warriors, take care. Stay blessed. Thank you for liking, sharing, subscribing my video. And until my next video, stay blessed. Laters.